Hello Church, it's Pastor Lisa bringing you another message. Today's message is called Start Right Here. It's actually based on a song by Matthew West. <clears throat> and feel free to go to YouTube and look it up. Our scriptures for today are Isaiah 43 verses 18 and 19. And then we will be in the book of Ephesians and the gospel of Matthew. In Isaiah 43, 18 and 19, don't remember the prior things. Don't ponder ancient history. Look, I'm doing a new thing. Now it sprouts up. Don't you recognize it? I'm making a way in the desert, paths in the wilderness. And then Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. Glory to God who is able to do far more than all we could ever ask or imagine. By his power at work within us, glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus for all generations, forever and ever. Amen. And then Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 19. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> for the last few weeks, I've had a sermon brewing in my head, and I think we all understand the concepts. It kind of takes time, the right ingredients for it to be done. It's like a cup of tea. <coughs> We heat up the water and add either tea leaves or a tea bag and let it steep for some time before it is done. We add sugar or milk or honey or maybe you're just like it plain. And then it's really done. This message actually started with two different songs. And while I was working all of this out, I ended up with one song. And there's another one out there, but it will be a while or not. But I'll share some of the lyrics in a few minutes. From there, it was a post on one of the clergy pages I follow, and in a few, I will get to this also. And when I set this aside, two things happened. When I get up in the morning, I listen to Caleb, and for those of you who don't know that, it is a contemporary Christian station. And one of the songs that came on the radio, <clears throat> but I had a few other things to do, so I just kind of blew it off. Still in the back of my head, there was something that I had to get back to. And then Bill sent me a meme on Messenger. When God wants you to do something, he will keep reminding you that you need to get this done. When I was choosing the scriptures, I thought I had everything set. And then I looked at them and decided, well, there's not quite right. So I changed them earlier this week. That was followed by a revamping of the message that I had written previously. <clears throat> the song I'm talking about, I actually played in church for the prelude. Because this is YouTube and there are copyright infringement laws, I don't, can't play it here. So I would recommend that you go look it up and listen to it. When we became Christians and followers of Christ, we try to make Jesus fit in their box to like and dislike the things that they do. Now, when Bill and I first joined our first motorcycle ministry, we rode to Indiana weekly to take a class. Actually, two. One was for new believers and the other one was on evangelism. Now, a while back, I asked what evangelism looks like to you, but I digress. When we received our colors or cut, that patch that we wear on our vest, the entire chapter came to our home church, and you talk about making people uncomfortable. There were a number of bikers in their leather and motorcycles in the parking lot, and they sat in the front. And that might be because many of our churches, the front pews are like lava, and no one sits there. And the person who operated the audiovisual board in the back watched all these bikers come into the church and they went to the pastor and told him, I'm not sure if you know this, but we have a whole bunch of bikers in our church. And the pastor knew, but no one else did. Because sometimes I love the element of surprise. His reaction was, yes! Now fast forward, we're, we invited Billy P to the church. Um, Billy lived in Michigan. There's a few things that you should know about him. He is a man of short statue, bald head, fumetchu mustache, covered with tattoos, and Billy looks like one of the guys that you cross the street to avoid. Billy is an addict who lived on the streets of Detroit in a tent and ate out of dumpsters. He is a four-time convicted felon. Now, Billy came in, he sat in the back of the church, and I watched as almost everyone who came in that church detoured around him, and not one person greeted him. And when it was time for the message, Billy got up and he took the pulpit. The change in attitude was amazing. When the members of the church came in and they saw him, they wanted nothing to do with him. But after he got up and he brought a powerful message, everything changed. The thing is, is that if people had not heard him speak. They would have continued to avoid people who lo look like Billy. Billy has since moved him and his family to Kentucky and he's doing some amazing work there. 
before I was called into ministry, a man named Squirrel came into the church with us and he made Billy look kind of mild in comparison to his, with his appearance. But because Billy had been there, Squirrel was accepted and greeted every time he came to church. It seemed the culture of the church runs people off. And I've seen it time and time again. One of the things that I love about the motorcycle, motorcycle ministry that I do is that I have people throughout the state who don't have a church connection or a pastor. And they think of me as their pastor. The other night I received a message from someone in the southern part of the state that says, I know you're my friend, but I also think of you as my pastor, and I would like for you to. The thing is, every time this happened, it floors me. It doesn't surprise me, but it does floor me. I want to share with you some of the lyrics that you, that you may have heard on that song, and if not, I still encourage you to go listen to it. We want our coffee in the lobby. We watch our worship on the screen. We got a rock star preacher who won't wake us from our dream. We want our blessings in our pocket. To, we keep our missions overseas, but for the hurting in our cities, we wouldn't even cross the street. We want to see the heart set free and the tyrants kneel and the walls fall down and our land be healed. But if the church we want to see change in the world out there, it's got to start right here. It's got to start right now. And Lord, I'm starting right here and I'm starting right now. Many times when a new pastor comes to church, there are all these visions on how things are going to change. I have some amazing gifts that God has shared with me, and I know many what many of them are. And I want to tell you that each of you have some pretty amazing gifts and talents that God has shared with you. I will also tell you that in this Christian walk, that as we change and grow and evolve, that our gifts do also. The problem is, they don't go away. Pardon me for a moment. God is persistent in getting you to follow through. Add to that, many want things the way they were because we've always done it that way. And for some reason, change is bad. Air Conference has an initiative called Reach 1000. That is to reach a thousand new people every year. And we really need to reevaluate how we do ministry in a lot of cases. I'm not saying change everything on Sunday mornings, but maybe update to some of the things we're doing. And we have started. There is Zoom. Whether you use it or not, it is here to stay. Technology is ever evolving and things like Facebook pages and websites aren't going to go away. New and not so new ways to reach people. I'd like to share with you something that a retired minister recently wrote. A new pastor is a woman, a man, a middle-aged, middle, middle -aged, a person of color, a liberal, a conservative, single, divorced, has a tattoo, or many, has children, introverted, musical, not the for, former pastor, unfortunately, or not the former pastor, thank God, experienced, really young. The new pastor is lots of things, especially human. If your church is receiving a new pastor, know this. The new pastor loves God, has been called by God to serve, has had that call confirmed by others. You know, the important stuff. Now, some pastors wear robes, some don't. Some preach with shoes on, some don't. And there's one thing that I know, and that is true to the way, I am true to the way that God called me. And I change and evolve as God moves me to. When I was baptized, <clears throat> I used the words, Lord, take me and use me as you want. Those are some pretty powerful words if we intend on following through. I meant them when I said them, I mean them now. I followed through when I went to minister in the jail and when I started in the motorcycle ministry, when I moved away from my family and friends, I chose to live up to my promise to God and to know that no matter where I am, God is there. And no matter what I'm going through, God is there. And there's so many opportunities that God puts right in front of us. And we don't, and we get so used to seeing them that they just become part of the scenery. Matthew 28 tells us to go and make disciples, but in order to do that, you have to get out of your bubble. We place ourselves in a bubble. We don't let anyone who is not like us in. We surround ourselves with those who believe like we do and rarely go outside of that bubble. We don't want to get down in the trenches and get our hands dirty. We tend to throw money at it, whatever it is. Now, don't get me wrong. Money is good and it does some great things, but there are so many opportunities to continue to be the church and those are acts of service. 
As Christians, we need to see and be seen. We need to reach those who do not know Christ. And we need to grow the kingdom. And we cannot do that by just sitting on the sidelines. Some more lyrics from that song. I'm like the brother of the prodigal who turned his nose and puffed his chest. He didn't run off like his brother, but his soul was just as dead. What if the church on Sunday was still the church on Monday too? What if we came down from our towers and walked a mile in someone's shoes? Hmm, because we want to see the heart set free and the tyrants nail, the walls fall down and our land be healed. But the church, we want to see change in the world out there. It's got to start right here. It's got to start right now. Lord, I'm starting right here. Lord, I'm starting right now. The thing is, is many times we've got to get out of our comfort zones. I think I'm a pretty outgoing person and I talk a lot. But there are times I get in my own head and I think I can't do this. And there are more times than I can count that I've looked up to the heavens and said, Seriously, God, what were you thinking? I can't do that. And when we first received our cuts or colors, one of the first things I said was, I need to go to jail. It's not something that most people would say. And there were times that we would be out at the end of the week and Bill would just ask me in front of a group of people, aren't you going to jail on Friday? And I would always say yes and look at people's reaction. I did jail ministry in Champaign County Jail. And for a few years, I became a member of the Disciple Bible Outreach Ministries of Air Conference. It is a conference program where Disciple Bible study is taken into to and taught in the prison system. It's an amazing study. And if you have not had the opportunity to take it and are interested, please let me know. If there is enough interest, I'd be more than happy to teach it. There are four studies. Each one's about 34 weeks. So you really have to make a commitment. I have loved bringing the message to the jail, and I worked with some pretty cool people. Some had been Christians their entire lives, and others, their experience. And others, let's just say, had an interesting past. Thing is, is when we talk about what we're called to do, we only want to do what we're comfortable with. And then there are the excuses. Too old, too young, too busy. I can't do that. I don't know how, no time, and a million other things. We don't have to do anything grandiose. Sometimes we are called. What we're called to do doesn't mean we have to pack up and move. Sometimes it does. There are times we choose to get down in the trenches to do the work. I have a friend of mine who works in the recovery community, and she was one of the first women writers that I had ever met. She doesn't ride now, and she hasn't for a number of years, but her work continues with that community and also with some of the homeless organizations in her county. The thing is that she doesn't even have to leave her house to do the ministry to help those friends without addresses. She has a box on her front porch. She puts out a list of needy, needy, needed items in places like the local Casey's and the bank and the community bulletin boards. And on this list, she puts, she puts that she lives in a little yellow house on Main Street and whatever is needed shows up at her house. And her son comes to visit. He picks up the items and delivers them to where they are the most needed. She makes a huge difference in so many people's lives and never even leaves her front, front porch. Not too long ago, a few of us met on Tuesday and, and we talked about where God is calling them in the church and their lives. And we formed faith works. And I will tell you that when I left the meeting, I was so excited in the ways that those who attended are being called. These are ways we can do God's work and follow our calling and live out our faith through works. And if you're interested, let me know. Shoot me a message. Shoot me an email. But there are things for the entire church, and that means all, all, everyone to get involved with. The lyrics that say, if we... If the, what if the church on Sunday was the church on Monday too, not only speaks volumes, but yell it from the mountaintops. Too many people get up, get ready for church, whatever reason they do. They come in, they sing the hymns, they pray the prayers, they listen to the message, they drop some money in the offering plate, they go home, and then they take their Sunday suit off and they put it back in the back of the closet, not to be seen again until the next week. We're the people called by his name. If we'll surrender all our pride and turn from our ways, he will hear from heaven and forgive our sin. He will hear to our land, but it starts right here. We're the people who are called by his name. If we will surrender all our pride and turn from our ways, 
He will hear from the heavens and forgive our sin. He will heal our land. It's got to start right here. It's got to start right now. Lord, I'm starting right here. Lord, I'm starting right now. In order for the church to survive, in order to grow the kingdom, we need to start right now. And we need to start right here. We have to be in the same... We have to be the same every day as we are on Sunday. And it's not just a place to be seen, but for others outside the walls of the building to see us live out our faith. Because all we all know that actions speak louder than words. So what's stopping you? What has God called you to do? What has God placed on your hearts? Amen.